welcome to Living Light in Toronto. I'm your host this evening, Lori Galsheimer. Today I have with me Jillian Vivona, and she's the founder of a new DVD called Steps to Success. Welcome to the show, Jillian. Thank you very much. It's great to have this opportunity to talk about the program. Um, today I'd like to start off by finding out about what made you decide to become a teacher. Well, to become a teacher in general, I think it was just a natural fit. It's just something that I'd always done, even as a student. I always found you reinforced your learning better by being a teacher, and I know that it's definitely what I was meant to do. Um, Did you know from a very young age that you wanted to be a teacher? Actually, I was supposed to be a veterinarian. Really? Right up until the second semester of my last um, high school year, and math and I were not friends. And so from there, it was... Plan B, which was to be a history teacher. That was the plan. And I'd been winning awards for social science proficiency and uh, working closely with my um, social science teachers and history and geography and so on. And it was just, it was a natural. And so I don't even know what where the struggle came from, from at the beginning. It was just, mm-hmm. you know, loving animals just isn't quite enough to be able to get you into the college and university yeah. programs that you need to. But it was... It was just a, a perfect fit. And I had been told by teachers um, throughout my high school career that I should become mm-hmm. a teacher. And I'd always said, no, I'm going to be a vet. And they, yeah. well, if you ever change your mind. And <laughs> so it, I did. Wow. <laughs> and it worked out for the best. Mm-hmm. And you, uh, you have been a teacher for a number of years, 29 years. And what uh, made you decide to make the DVD Steps to Success? Well, I taught for my first six years of my career in the private school. Mm -hmm. Um, And the private school that I was in was very small. Uh, My maximum class size was 11. And there will be two teachers who are hearing this who will be going, no, get out. 11 (laughs) students, my dream. What a difference. No no, uh, completely um, enriched programs no disciplinary problems and then when it was time to have a family needed to move on to more stable retirement benefits that kind of a thing so I moved into the um, Toronto Catholic Board Mm -hmm. and I was introduced to the world of the non-academic student and of course I hadn't had the opportunity to practice the training that I had received in class management and so on so it was a real eye-opener for me and I had to admit that Uh, I didn't feel like I had done a very good job with that. And what do you mean by a non-academic student? Well, these were students who did not do well with reading for whatever reasons, whether they had behavioral issues or they were poor in their skills for reading and comprehension. At the time, there hadn't been, uh, when I moved into the public system, there wasn't a whole lot of attention being given to diagnostics or diagnoses, in fact, of learning disabilities and different capabilities Mm -hmm. and so on. They had just started doing this whole business of streaming students, but uh, I mean, even when I was in high school, we had advanced uh, general and basic. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what that meant because I always went through the advanced stream. So Mm -hmm. uh, there weren't resources that were available and so on. And so when I had my first basic level class, it was it was really a foreign foreign animal to me. And I did felt I, when I look back, uh, I think what prompted me to start the program was a little bit of guilt about not having really mm-hmm. served those students as well as I could have, as well as I could now with the program that we have. And how did you feel back then when you were going through that, having difficulties with these students? What kind of difficulties did you have? It was more of a good lord will they never sit still and be quiet and will they never because I hadn't had to deal with that kind of issue before and it was uh, they wanted much more hands-on whereas I was paper paper oriented for six years and writing essays and doing all of this kind of thing and I didn't really have a grasp of where these students were going to go in their lives and the kinds of needs that they had the backgrounds that they came from where I had been for six years these were very affluent Um, communities, children from very affluent families, Mm -hmm. there weren't these issues to have to deal with. So you didn't have to incorporate that into the teaching and into the learning structure at all. And so it was very foreign for me. And so over time you developed a new strategy. Well, no, actually it didn't quite happen that way. I sort of went along my merry way 
and this is explained in the book that goes along with the DVDs, uh, that um, for about 10 years I was just, I had mostly academic classes and uh, I had received this, for the very first time, a mixed class um, of academic and some applied level students and the attitude mm -hmm. at the time then was that let's mix them together so the academic peers will keep the applied animals in control and that was really I don't know it sounds a little draconian there mm -hmm. but that really was the attitude and it did it, and it, when, did it work at all and well it worked for the classroom management and it was okay for the academic students because you'd have 25 academic and five applied and the five applied would more or less get buried in, in the shuffle and you give them 10 questions instead of the 20 that the academic did and there really was again no grasp of the changes that were really necessary for these students. They, they didn't need dumbed down, they needed different. Mm -hmm. That was what needed to happen and I happened to, as, um, as it's explained in the book, look at a report card of a student and while I might have expected the student not to do particularly well, when I looked at the mm -hmm. course averages, I was completely appalled that across the board, they were 50 and below, wow. mostly below. So how do all the students in this course program fail? Well, wow. What so are the odds, really, if the program is, if there's a proper program for them? And so when there was a change of administration, that's what prompted me to say, I want to mm -hmm. try different. Give me carte blanche. And I had a fantastic principal who knew exactly where I was coming from. And mm -hmm. I, there's a story about how that whole, hap that whole episode happened in the book. And uh, he let me do um, pretty much everything I wanted to do. Wow. And he gave me financial support to do that. And that continued with the administrators that followed. They, they gave me the financial support with the program that was needed. And um, my colleagues in my department, uh, because I, my, my, the challenge for me, the fear, was that mm -hmm. it's me. It's, it works because it's me. I didn't want that to be the case. I wanted when, it to work, the when program. When you say it, it's me, meaning you were thinking that you were the only one that was going to have success with what the because, concepts you were using? Because it was the deliverer, not the program. And right. so I needed other people to teach it and try it and utilize it and tweak it to their own personalities and still see if they were having the same kind of success. And they were. Really? And even teachers who used the program in part instead of an entirety were still having success. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, wow, this is fantastic. So over the next 10 years, I tweaked and adjusted and added and changed up and kept certain things. And uh, so when it came time to start putting it all together in the book and the DVDs uh, with the templates that go along with it, it mm -hmm. needed to be very user friendly. It needed to be very well explained. The visuals, I'm a very visual person. I think most people in our society are. Mm -hmm. And so the DVDs complement the book and the templates. And it's really a great comprehensive program for mm -hmm. educators, even for parents. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, just, oh, yeah. I, can I think anybody, anybody would enjoy the diagnostics section of it mm -hmm. and what that involves. And... Uh, would be able to utilize that in just developing better working relationships with other people. And can you give me some examples of how you've had success with students? Maybe you don't want to go into great detail, but just to give There's me lots of, of anecdotes in the, in the uh, book and in the DVDs themselves, but uh, uh, some examples of success. I had a young baby teacher come to a presentation that I did at OHASTA, which is the Conference for Social Science Teachers. And so I went through the series of diagnostics that we do and um, mm -hmm. explained the program. He took it back to his school and uh, he implemented only part of it because he wasn't sure if he was going to get the backing from his administrator, but he tried just a few of the strategies. The change that he observed in his students was no, not for what he said was nothing short of miraculous. This was a person who was waking up in the morning with headaches, was having that sickening feeling in his stomach that oh, I can't do this because they'd given this baby teacher mm -hmm. two applied classes. 
to start off with and they didn't give him the strategies to deal with it mm, wow. so he implemented these parts and then he emailed me back and he said thank you I fell in love with teaching again and now I know why I want to do this and what and can you go into a little more detail about what you mean by diagnostics well part I you have five months to work with a student you see them an hour and a quarter a day and in order to be able to be help them be as successful as they can possibly be the best way to do that is to get to know them as quickly as possible so by the end of the first week if you use the diagnostics which involves body language observations handwriting analysis tree personality drawing and all of that is explained we have uh, uh, just terrific packages that we've prepared for people um, when you use that compiled together with a series of diagnostic test questions that are asked, you can gather a tremendous amount of information about the child that's in mm -hmm. front of you and learn how to build the trust. What's the key to a trust? If I may give you an example, if you were a male teacher and a student sitting in front of you had some very difficult experiences with males, mm -hmm. had very um, intense emotions because that's one of the characteristics of these students is typically they don't have a lot of coping strategies. Mm -hmm. So they express their emotions a lot more intensely. And mm -hmm. so if you knew that ahead of time, if you knew that in the first week, do you think that that would help you in building a trust working relationship that you would be able to then be able to deliver course and curriculum and skills, life skills with that student because you got to break down that wall. <clears throat> this person thinks that all men, especially men in authority, mm -hmm. are evil creatures. You're, it's not personal. You're just another one of them. But you don't have to be if you know ahead how to circumvent the wall. And is there, uh, it goes beyond just diagnostics. Your, your DVD and book also offer a little bit more detail about the actual teaching. Well, the actual, the actual program itself, so once you've, developed, once you've gone through the diagnostics, the actual program itself involves a lot of cooperative group learning, which these students thrive on. It allows them for a great deal of hands-on um, activities. And again, they have different coping strategies, different skills. So. One of the lines in the book is that the room will be loud, mm -hmm. but it's not chaotic. It will seem chaotic. So get used to a bit of noise, but if you start yeah. to listen to the noise, it's actually work related. And they're talking mm -hmm. about the tasks wow. because they need yeah. to work together. Mm -hmm. And some, some of the testimonial parts of the DVDs, the, just so the students will say themselves, I don't work well by myself. I need to work with somebody else, and this program allows that to happen. So mm -hmm. quite often colleagues or even administrators will pop their head in the room, and they'll, I've had one of my um, uh, colleagues from when I first joined the school where I'm located now, St. Basil the Great College School, and he walked his head. He's a very old-school, traditional teacher, mm -hmm. and he looked around the room, and he knew the students who were there and the look on his face and he said they're working and I looked up and I said of course they are what would you think they'd be doing and he looked again he said but I know so and so and so and so and so and so and they're working I said yes they are can I help you mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you need mm -hmm. you know it's great so for it's you to stop by. but he was yeah. really quite taken aback that there that these are students who typically there's no expectation that they will be able to sit still or stay on task while talking with each other. And there's music playing in the background, or maybe they're listening to their own music on their earphones and so on. And all of that structure is explained, you know, in the book. Um, mm -hmm. And they are enjoying it. And it's a safe place, too, mm -hmm. because it has to be safe for them. They have to know that they can be comfortable with who they are in amongst all the others who are comfortable with who they are. And I guess the teachers... And you know, not be caught up in that competition. Right. There's no testosterone battles in the room allowed, that kind of a thing. You have to add, what I say to the teachers, um, is you have to add to your teacher radar uh, words like stupid, even tone of voice, dummy, what's wrong with you, you should know that. None of that is permitted because if they wouldn't want me to say that to them, you don't say that right. to someone else because how they think is how they will behave. So if they if they allow 
someone to talk to them that way. Mm -hmm. Even in a derogatory tone of voice, that's how they'll believe themselves. And you have to break, that's one of the walls you've got to break down, is that belief in themselves that I can do this. Because one of the quotes I like to write up on my board is, if you believe you can't, you're right. If you believe you can, you're right. It's what you believe. Yes. That will help to determine your yes. well. That will help to determine your success. Mm-hmm. So for a lot of them, it's a change in attitude and the strategy. It's competitiveness, the fun about it, the relaxed nature about it. Um, the it's structured, but it doesn't appear to be structured. Um, it works so well for them. That sounds amazing. I think you have a lot to share, people, and and I'm sure that there's going to be so many teachers out there that are just going to be jumping at the chance to, to get this information from you. Uh, and you there's you've told me that you were interested in in giving uh, some uh, gratefulness to the people who are also involved in helping you promote your. Well, I your I have to do a shout out. Thank you to my publisher Omar Murji. And uh, he was one of those very skeptical people sitting in the back of a room during one of my diagnostic workshops at Ohasta. And uh, he had this sort of quizzical, really, this actually works look on his face for most of the workshop. And he came up afterwards and introduced himself. And I said, well, that's fine. You know, you're welcome to go go away and try it. Call me, see what happens. Mm -hmm. He called me and he said, it works <laughs> and I said I know yeah. <laughs> and so uh, and from we met and it he's been absolutely fantastic nudging me and pushing me along I've been told by many people you've got to write this down you've got to get a book and so he was he's my encourager and he got mm-hmm. me to get the book together he sets up the DVDs he and uh, all of the little things and he takes care of everything I've produced the product and he's taking care of that and He's been an absolute tremendous support, and many people have been tremendous support. Colleagues, administrators, um, uh, even um, at the various teacher colleges. Mm -hmm. They've brought me in and uh, been very supportive of the program and allowed me to share that with teacher candidates because they're the teachers of the future. Mm -hmm. And so they're very excited and always about things that are new and that are going to be helpful for them and practical. Mm -hmm very user-friendly and that's what teachers want they want things that are practical user-friendly where you can actually see the results Mm -hmm. well I can't imagine what else we can add to you've done a (laughs) wonderful job at uh, giving us a great deal of information about what you all have to offer and I thank you so much for coming in and sharing this all your experiences with us and thank you very much (laughs) for allowing me the opportunity to do so